My life was in your hands at that point, do you realise? <laughs> I think it was, yes. I was quite pleased to get the shot, really. Right. Now, when you were doing that shot, um, which presumably is difficult, uh, because it was live and uh, your, your little reputation's on the line at that moment, do you have any kind of special aid? I mean, is that a special thing that you use, that thing there? A cue? Yeah. Yeah, well, I've played with the same cue now for, um, oh, 14 years. I've had it uh, nearly all my playing career. Now, is it a talisman? If it, was, if it were lost on an aeroplane, for instance, what would be the feeling? Well, it would be... Oh, it's more... It, it's intrinsic. Obviously, it's not worth anything unless it was bid for in a charity, but I wouldn't give it away as in a charity. I would be distraught if I lost it, because it's like um, a golfer's putter, especially if he was in form with it, or, say, a set of darts that Eric Bristow might play with, or a violin, Stradivarius violin. It's something you get used to. It's like an extension of your arm, and there's a grain in the cue, and when you look down the grain, it's a familiar sight. And to play with another piece of wood, even though it might be a better piece of wood, that wouldn't be the same looking down the queue. It's like down, looking down the rifle line. And mentally, subconsciously, you wouldn't be as confident from, from the start. And it right. would take a long time, I think. Ray Reardon uh, lost his queue a little while ago, and it, it takes a long time to get used to another queue. So I guard it with my life. I really do. I mean, I don't actually sleep with it, but it's very close to the bed in hotel rooms. I take it everywhere I go. Um, I once had, um, a long time ago, a lucky charm given to me. I've got it in the case here. There's uh, a couple of other favourite uh, items I keep in here. I've got a lucky charm, which is a, a bell with a Japanese inscription on that was given to me by a Japanese waitress in a restaurant in Canada. And <laughs> <laughs> I've kept it so long. And this, was before I was, this was before I was a professional. And I've kept that so long. And um, it also acts, other than a lucky charm, which I suppose everybody's got certain things, that, even if they don't believe in them, uh, superstition, it acts as a burglar alarm as well, because uh, when it's in the case, it rattles. So if I lean it up against the wall and somebody tries to take the cue away from me, it, all things like that go through your mind. It sort of makes a noise, and I know somebody's after me cue. Right. Do you have a table at home? I have a table. We have a table at home, yes. And, uh, but really, I suppose, really, when I get back home, which is not that often, mm. um, I'm mostly on the road, um, it's nice to relax and forget about the snooker side of things. So this is my... This is my snooker home, and has been now for, for ages at the Matchroom Club in Romford. It's a very exclusive club. It's a bit clicky, as all good clubs are, really. If you're inside the clickiness, it's great. If you're outside, it's Absolutely. not so good. It's fantastic. Listen, I don't want you to get a crick in your bike, because you've been leaning for so oh, long, and obviously you've lent for a lot of your life. Let's go and sit down <laughs> and have a little chat. Now, when people have favourite things, they presumably have things that they don't like doing. I wondered whether constant practising wasn't a favourite thing, or even maybe may a favourite thing? Um, constant practising is, is hard. It's something that's very difficult to do, but I think it's a great, it's great benefit. You get a great joy out of it when it goes right. Um, it's not, fortunately, it's not um, monotony all the time, because every time the balls are on the table, they're usually in a different position and you've got a different problem. The one thing that uh, practice is very useful for is trying to groove an action to groove, uh, to keep on repeating the same thing, which is what you're trying to do when you play snooker, is to repeat the same movement, to send the, the snooker cue through straight. Do you have a favourite technique for uh, keeping your mind occupied while you're practising? No. Or does, you, does your mind ever wander? I mean, are you thinking about sunshine or it, grapes it, or it wine? Does, it, do, it does wander um, if, it, if I practise too long. Um, and that's, that's quite an art, is to know how long you can practise for before you start to, to lose concentration. And I can concentrate on my own for about two hours. That's my limit of my own playing. And with my father, when we practise three, three and a half, four at, at most, if, especially four, four hours if I'm getting ready for a big tournament, and my, I'm more tuned in. I don't play in the summer um, because there's nothing really to aim for in the summer. Our snooker tournament season runs from about September uh, through till... Uh, the World Championships in May. Right. So during the summer months, um, I do relax and put the cue away completely. Does your belly get bigger during the summertime? A little bit, a little bit bigger. There's not too much, but it, uh, when the snooker season starts and the, the nerves get to you before the game, it, uh, it soon goes down. I can tell you <laughs> <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> What's your favourite hotel? My favourite hotel? Oh, that's unfair. No. What a go terrible on, go unfair. On, go on. I have many favourite hotels. <laughs> I Come do. on, I Davis, have many... get clean with this. What's my favourite hotel? I'm going to... Um, no, I'm not going to remember my favourite hotel. I'm not even going to answer it. Sorry. I, I don't know at this moment. If you have we... a favourite father? Favourite father? Mm. 
Uh, yes, I do. Yes, that one I can answer. <laughs> yes. Oh, I do, though. Is there, there are quite a lot of people ask if Joe Davis and Fred Davis are related to me, the great snooker players. And I always used to say my answer to that was always, well, and not unless they were milkmen. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure that uh, my favourite father was Bill, and he's the person uh, that uh, I practice with, and he's my coach. And, uh, and you're going to play a bit with him now, are you? Yeah, we're going to have a little for game. The, for the practice. You've been talking too much. Why don't you play with him and think of your favourite hotel? I will do. And I'll <laughs> if we're practising, I'll remember it, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we're going to try and uh, play what is one of the, the hardest practice things to do, but it's a very valuable thing. It's anything, I think any other snooker player should try it themselves. It's a test of accuracy. And what, what I do need is somebody to see what I'm doing right. And the father's always, always around to... Uh, to help out, fortunately. Otherwise, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be as good a player as I am, actually. I've got to try and pop the balls into the corner pocket. It's just a case of trying to do everything right. That's a miracle. <laughs> got that one in. <laughs> Bang in the middle of the summer time to do that first time. Was that OK? Couldn't have been bad, could it? Not bad. Oh, I think it should have stuck where it was before. That was miles out. Yeah. Miles out of that. You were on the right. Yeah. If your dad knows what he's talking about, and he seems to know what he's talking about, how come he's not world champion? <laughs> Actually, he always says if he had the ability, he'd be better than me. But, but unfortunately, he hasn't got as much ability. It's a strange thing. You need the ability even with all the practice, don't you? But do you agree? Yeah, uh, it's impossible to put into practice what you uh, preach. <laughs> <laughs> How long will Steve play for, do you think? As long as he's interested. There's no time limit? No, no, as long as you've got the enthusiasm to play the game and uh, some sort of incentive to go for, then you'll play. Do you row? All the time. Yeah, we have terrible... Actually, we only, have... at, only at snooker, of course. Yeah, we don't... Uh, we don't actually row, it's just... Um, <laughs> uh, it's very hard for me to tell him what to do and for a son to accept yeah, it's, it's very strange. Usually a coach is somebody who, who sort of is, is somebody paid to, or, or is somebody you don't really know that well to start with anyway. Yeah. But uh, since, but when you especially, when I was a, especially when I was a young kid, uh, to have somebody around the like, teenage years of 15, 16, when you're sort of you're trying to find your own identity, that would be a bit corny. Um, we had sort of uh, so many uh, arguments over silly things, like he'd say, like, I was hitting the ball on the right, and I would just sort of totally disagree, just for the sake of disagreeing. But yeah. I'm a bit more sensible now, and if he says I'm doing something wrong, um, I know I'm doing something wrong, so uh, we try and work on it. Go for it. This is the pastoral side of Steve Davis, this, isn't it? Yes, I, I don't know anything about fishing, but fortunately, uh, where we are, we've got uh, a pond that um, it's got quite a lot of fishing. You can't really fail to catch fish. It's great for kids, like so my manager's kids, uh, Katie and Edward, have come down, and uh, you can catch so many fish in a day. It's How far away from where you were born are we now? Uh, I was born across the river in Plumstead, which is probably directly across the Thames from here. And what kind of circumstances were you brought up in as a kid? Um, well, not poverty, but um, like working class, for sure. Um, we started off, uh, but the parents uh, had upstairs a room in a, in a house, uh, rented that. Then we moved to one of the old prefabs, and they lived in a prefab in Abbey Wood. Then we got a council flat in, that was in Abbey Wood as well. Then all of a sudden I started making um, a little bit of money in the game. But were you in those town days, did you ever uh, regard the countryside as a place of, of uh, a place of rest, relaxation, beauty, whatever it is? I mean, was it a favorite place? No, really. I think uh, I hated it. I didn't. I, I wasn't really too. But living in London all the, all the time, um, I think you're sort of not really relaxed in the country. Um, and when I first came over here uh, and living on the farm and that, and, and in the, this is the countryside, even though it's got quite close to the to the sort of London, really. Yeah. But uh, when I first came over, I remember um, I used I used to be frightened of bees and insects and, and things like. That. If a bee came close, I'd be like, oh, I'll get it out of the way. But now, after a while. Now, after the first couple of months around here, I got used to it. All of a sudden, I started relaxing a bit. And um, if the bee lands on you now, you just let it walk over you. It's, it's strange. I tell you what, it's a really strange feeling after a while. You become much more at peace in the country. And um, so now I, I wouldn't like to live in the city, even though I suppose I spend most of my time, unfortunately, 
on the road, which are, which are in the major cities. Oh, we've got one here. <laughs> here we are. Wow. Come Quickly. to your Uncle Steve. This is the biggest... Uh, uh, also, <laughs> geez, this rod's a bit... Uh, this is my brother's rod. Nicely done it <laughs> in the lip. What kind of a fish is it? Well, it, it'll be a... It'll be a, a disappointed fish. <laughs> no, no. We'll just whip that out and... Um, Send it back. Put him back in there. Yeah. Oh, no, it's probably fish. going back to say, do you know where I've just been? Or do you know who I've just seen? Well, I don't know about that. You seem sensibly uh, to have adjusted to one of my favourite things. Go on. Money. Money? Mm. Um, it doesn't seem to create any pro real problem for you. You're not... You're not too flash or too dazzled by No, it. no. I, the only real extravagance I have is um, is, uh, is buying a load of records, I think, really. I've, bought, I've got a flash car, but I don't really sort of uh, take too much care of it. If anybody scratches it, it doesn't really worry me that much. But um, the money side of things is absolutely tremendous, and I never take uh, the mickey out of money, the fact that uh, I make a tremendous amount for doing what I consider is something I like doing. And, uh, and there's other people doing things that they hate doing for, for nothing, nowhere right. near that. So I'm very aware of that fact. But um, I'm also, uh, it doesn't affect me that much. It's very easy to say it doesn't affect you when you've got it. Absolutely. But it's not the reason I play snooker for. Are you canny? Tight. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I mean, uh, my manager reckons I'm one of the few snooker players that the only way to get a drink out of him is to stick two fingers down his throat. <laughs> But I don't know how tight that is. But I'm <laughs> thinking, I'm thinking, <laughs> when you're actually playing a game, for instance, like any important championship, yeah. are your eyes going like cash registers, thinking that there's 50,000 or 60,000? No, no, I did that once, and uh, it was at, when the game was, was uh, all of a sudden the game was getting big, and all of a sudden the first prizes were jumping up in every tournament, and the, and the next tournament was the biggest prize. But uh, I, I learnt my lesson because I missed the ball I, I was going for. And I, but I won, still won the match, fortunately. But I missed the ball I was going for. But um, I was thinking of that Willie Thorne thing when you were just coming behind. The, well, that's uh, right. Yeah, the, the last tournament uh, that I that I won from behind, which was one of my favourite uh, wins, I think, uh, in recent uh, the recent year anyway, was uh, against Willie Thorne, and I was quite a long way behind, and it was a test of character. Well, somehow he's kept the red on the table, but I don't think it'll be there much longer now. And the congratulations come forward. Willie Thorne congratulates Steve Davis, who becomes the Coral United Kingdom snooker champion for the fourth time. But, I mean, I cried my eyes out after that game, and, and I, I've won it. Uh, and it was the relief of, of, of and the sort of excitement. As you can see from the extravagance behind me, one of my favourite things is music. This is quite extravagant, isn't it? It's, it's loud, it's over the top. It's totally over the top, and uh, there's, there's quite a bit of um, esoteric equipment there. Is it in custom the designed, thing. this? Some of it is, yeah. The, the, the two decks there were made so you could mix um, records together, as they do in some discos, but um, I get a great deal of fun in here. It's like a, a get away from it all, and it's completely different from the snooker side. When of you're things. doing all this that you just talked about, I mean, this high-tech thing there, and there's nobody else here. Do you dance? Yeah. I practice. Yes, I don't... I, you know, very, very, very rarely do I ever sort of dance in discos because I'm sort of still a bit self-aware, really, sometimes. And unless you're with a lot of friends at a party, you don't feel like you can let yourself go completely. But um, when I've got the speakers in front and I sort of get, to get into one, yeah, so pra have a laugh at the dancing. Unfortunately, it's not, dancing's uh, on carpet's not the best, so you can't really go for gold. There's nobody here to see it. That's right, my back walking's terrible on carpet. <laughs> I can't walk backwards. 
I can't do a Michael Jackson. Presumably you have all the music uh, that you really need at, at your fingertips here. <laughs> what happens when you want to listen to live music? Um, I go out and um, I don't... The, what, the good thing about going to concerts, and there's not that many that uh, come to London, the, the people you want to see, usually. As but, in? Well, I like a lot of the soul musicians and the soul, the soul singers. Um, but you can go to them because the people that go along to watch are not going along because they want to see you. They're going along to see the artist, obviously. So uh, I'm quite pleased to go along and I feel very, very relaxed. Sometimes in public you are not relaxed because you know people are going to be asking you to do things or some people get overexcited when they see somebody they've seen on the television, which does happen occasionally. Um, and that's always a bit frightening to know how they're going to react if now, they go over the top. How does it manifest itself, this excitement, when you appear? Well, I, I tend to have a little bit of... Um, I tend to be... I've, a lot of women want to mother me. Yeah, it's more the sort of the, the older age bracket. And a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of the grands, like, like remind, I remind them of their, uh, their the grandson or their, their lad when they was young. But mm. after all, you do get used to it. I think anybody in the public eye does. And, and I, do, I, I do like being in the public eye. I'm like vain enough, I suppose, to sort of want to be the centre of attraction. That's why probably when I do the exhibition side of, of the work and play snooker exhibitions, I, I enjoy them. I don't think of them as a chore. Has your vanity therefore increased, do you think? No, no, it stayed about the same. And probably I'm not so... I'm not so um, I don't need to be the centre of attraction all the time. I, I can, I'm now, I've had centre of attraction, so I can, I can lay off. One of the things that you're, I don't know whether you're relaxing with it, and I don't know how favourite it is, but you're, you're now a DJ, are you? Or a, <laughs> a, what, a radio presenter? I don't think, I'm not too sure what you call it, actually. What do you call it? I'm posing at being DJ for the week. It's with? A complete ego trip on Essex Radio. And uh, I've taken over for the week while he's on holiday the John Leach Soul Show, which is a very well known uh, show on Essex Radio now. It's got quite a big following. Steady, steady. <laughs> right. Hello. Hello, hello. Yes, that's right, isn't it, for the level? Terrific. Hi, this is Angel, and you're listening to Steve Interesting Davis on Essex Radio. Tonight I'm going to be playing some of my favourite jazz, soul and dance classics and for all you electro fans, this is for you. Hello, it's, it's a straight uh, hand over and a straight hand back on this first link tonight, OK? OK, that's fine. His headphones playing up, it's crackling all the time. When I first thought about the idea, I thought oh, I'll do this all myself, it's got to be a piece of cake. And then I went into the studios and uh, realised that uh, that to put the cartridge machines and get the adverts and get the AA to go to the AA for the weather reports and the road reports were impossible and the bottle went completely. Right. Brill. So now I've got uh, a technical operator, who's an engineer who's doing all that, and I am doing the, playing, playing my own records and using my microphone up and down and put my own little jingles in. The next record that I'm going to play is, um, is a, a very old favourite of mine, and this goes out to Tracy who works in the matchroom uh, offices down in Romford there. And Steve in the office said that Tracy decides that she's looking for a man at the moment to pay her electricity bill, which I think is a, uh, a bit snidey. But anyway, this is going to you, Tracy. And, uh, well, I mean, I saw you at the cricket uh, the other day and you've got a lovely bum. Woof! <laughs> do you watch telly for, yes. for relaxation? Yes, I do, yeah. Who? Um, what? My favourite programme is Hill Street Blues. Good. Yeah, that's Good. my favourite. Yeah. I'll tell you what that, why that programme's better than all the other soaps, as far as I'm concerned. It shocks. I don't think the other soaps shock anymore. You know what's going to happen. Mm. But with Hill Street Blues, all of a sudden, they just kill off one of their, one of their characters. I'll tell you what does shock around here, which may be one of your favourite things, or two of your favourite things. There are two hounds, like the Baskerville hounds. Are they, what, Mutt and Jeff, are they called or something? Well, close. Yeah. Spot and plane, named after the billiard balls on the billiard table. Spot and plane. Are they safe? Uh, they're, they're safe. Um, they're, 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 they're very good pets guard dogs. They're safe. Uh, they, they let you in, but they don't let you out. All Rottweilers and guard dogs. Plane! Spot! The Bonio! It's here! Would you like that? That's good, isn't it? You want that one? Do you want that one, Spot? They're, they're That's very tremendous. docile. I thought they'd be sort of no. running crazy. Well, they're, they're, uh, they're not... Where are you going with that, Spot? Spot, here. come back with that. No, he likes to hide it. 
Yeah. Good boy, Plane. Plane? What's that? What's, What's that? Fetch it. Fetch it. Go on, fetch it. Kill. Get it. Kill. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. Go on, go on. Get him. It won't. It's just won't. a big... <laughs> yeah, go on, get that. What is that, Plane? Look at his up and there. <laughs> Stiff as anything. No, but I'll tell you what, it's tremendous, because we're out in, in the middle of nowhere, and these dogs, I'll tell you what, at night times, they're phenomenal. Are they? Oh, they bark at anything, that, and they do, they're very protective, um, of, especially of a mother and father. Yeah. Are they affectionate doing, at all to you? Oh, yeah, they like it. They're soppy, they're soppy as, as you could possibly be. You are soppy, aren't you? They're, they're pretty soppy, but um, not when, not when uh, night time comes for some reason. Right. Yeah. I do think that if you were going to have a Porsche, which you've got here, yes. you might have chosen a, a better um, number, plate. number plate. Well, that's, uh, that's for the amount of uh, what the dogs do around the place. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people uh, uh, seem to be mildly irritated that you, with all your success and all your attainment, you still choose to live at home with your mum and dad. Yeah, I can imagine that would Now, probably... why are they irritated by that? Um, I would think... Because uh, somebody who's now 28, a uh, male 28, shouldn't be living at home with their parents. But uh, I'm in a position really where I, I've, I don't want to, to leave my family. Um, I spend so much time on the road that it's really nice to come back to somewhere that's lived in. Uh, and I get on so well with my mother and father. And, and um, when you travel, when you go, and when you come back, it's great to come back to a, to a house that's been lived in. And to, to have somewhere on my own, like a bachelor apartment that, that I lived in, would be, I think, a pretty lonely life. Do you love them? Yes, oh, yeah. Are yeah. you paying them back for, th for something? I mean, are you... Well, it's not a direct payment back, but I, I feel as if sort of I've repaid the love they've given me by um, when my father and mother don't work officially as jobs now, they've got jobs that are probably even harder now, looking after this place and... Uh, my mother up until just recently was running the fan club uh, before it got a bit too overpowering for her. She also, I hear, makes a mean Marmite sandwich. Or Barbara, or whatever. What is yeah, it? my snack. Uh, I've, I've done it. It's been in a few books as well, I think, when, they, when people ask they're making, uh, making books up of people's favourite menus and things. Yeah. But um, sitting down there and uh, having a, a bacon, cheese and Marmite sandwich on brown bread, which is a bit of a mouthful. Great, Great for fantastic taste. Now, this is the celebrated sandwich that your Steve is talking about, which you've made for that me. Is Can I have one without crust on? Yes, yes. Would you? What is it? Right, what is it I'm of? sure he won't miss a quarter of it. It's, is this for him? Uh, yes, uh, just bacon and cheese and marmite. It must be brown bread and Good, isn't it? bacon sizzling, and it sort of melts the cheese, I think. He's always going on about this bacon being next to the cheese. It melts it. It, <laughs> it is very tasty, very. isn't it? Yeah, you know that tasty. he could afford a corner table at the Ritz or the... Cafe, uh, Cafe de Paris or wherever, and yet he chooses to settle down yeah. with this. Yes. Has he changed yes, in no, his taste? No, 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 not really, no. Well, I suppose really the, the thread through it all has been the Marmite, you see, <laughs> as far as the food's concerned. <laughs> <laughs> if I could stand all the jars of Marmite end to end along the motorway, I should think they'd probably go from that would measure... to John Groats of the, his life. T.S. Yeah. said it's that I have measured out my life in coffee spoons. Now, well, you've measured Steve life in Marmite, Marmite, haven't you? I think it really goes way back, yes. Yeah. People's favourite things change, don't they? I mean, what you liked 20 years ago, or maybe in your case, 40 or 50 years ago, um, you wouldn't like now today, and you apparently were quite keen on this thing called Space Invaders. Yeah, if you'd have asked me four or five years ago, I would have said that was one way of relaxing, and I think it was a lot of people's way of relaxing. But is it not mindless? Well, lots of people used to call them mindless, but I'll tell you what, one thing they were tremendous for, for, uh, for your, your reflexes and hand-to-eye coordination. And, I mean, it was proven that they helped they, in uh, getting people that had muscular troubles. Um, it was proven that they actually did help people and aid people to get back their muscular coordination. Do you have a favourite snooker player? <laughs> Other than myself. <laughs> I have. I tell you. I tell you. My favourite snooker players are, or have been in the past. When I was young, my favourite snooker player was Ray Reardon, because uh, he was head and shoulders above the rest in class and in in temperament and all the things. I thought, well, I must watch to see how good he is, and why is he better? And I, I tried to. And obviously, I played him, and that was a great honour at the time. I, I sort of. And I was fortunate enough to win with a start. And I sort of. I think I've learned things off of Ray Reardon. Sort of cool. He's very cool. My favourite player off off the table was Terry Griffiths. 
He's a very funny bloke. Off the table. Off the table. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a really funny bloke and nothing like his, uh, his perhaps his image uh, on the table. And uh, my favourite players to watch are Jimmy White when he's in full flow and also Alex Higgins when he is playing well. He's my, he's my least favourite player to watch when he's playing badly because he's, he's, he's very bad when he plays. But when he's playing well, he's the best player in the world. Image is important, isn't it? Image is very important, is yes. spitting image important? <laughs> spitting image is very important, yes. Um, spitting image is, uh, is one of those programmes, if you get on it, you've got to be so pleased, <laughs> even though people think that you're, you must be upset with your image. And I'm quite pleased with my spitting image puppet. Which even, is what? Which is, uh, well, it, it's called Interesting. Uh, they called me Steve Interesting Davis. The only trouble is that the puppet's more interesting than I am actually in real life. <laughs> <laughs> and to, and to my, my, I'm quite pleased because it's one of the few puppets that's um, better looking as a puppet than I am <laughs> uh, in real life as well. Uh, in the whole um, range of matches that you've played, supposing you had on video say to take one with you to your desert island, what would you, which match is the most, is your favourite match? Oh, that's a tough one. I suppose just for the statement it made. Uh, the first time I won the World Championships when I beat um, Doug Mountjoy. Mm. And that was, until you actually win the World Championships, you never know you're capable, you never know you're a, a champion, a, a world champion. So, for that reason, that would be the one. But there's other games that are stuck in my mind. Is it possible to have a favourite losing one? <laughs> I suppose it is, yeah, sort of the masochistic sort of way. Um, when, I, when Dennis beat me in the final on the black ball, uh, that was a very exciting moment, but I, I don't look back at that. I think my favourite one recently was when I got beat by Joe, if I had to pick one, because hopefully I would have learnt a lot from it. Um, and it's very rare that somebody completely outplays you, as Joe did. Another miss by Steve. Looked all set. It's one of the loneliest places in the world to sit out on, on that chair when the other guy's putting all the balls and everybody's cheering and, and clapping. And it's a very lonely place to be, but it tells you a lot about yourself. And it also, it can make you harder, and hopefully it will do. Do you want to be harder? Yeah, yeah. I want, I want, to, be, I want to be able to play the game as well as possible. Obviously, that's the practice side of it. But I also want to be able to cope with every situation that's thrown upon me. And against Joe, that was a new situation, to be totally outplayed in the final. Against Dennis, I wasn't totally outplayed. It was just a close game. Do you want to be hard enough, finally, to answer the name of your favourite hotel? <laughs> I'll go for it. I tell you, well, every summer we have we go we go all around the world playing snooker, and so my urges to travel are quite satisfied. But every summer, uh, I have a typical family holiday down in Dawlish at the Langston Cliff Hotel, and it's great fun. We have a, a typically English holiday, typically English, and uh, do all the things that uh, that perhaps you wouldn't think you would be able to do, but uh, get totally left alone, have a great time. And uh, that's probably my favourite. I knew you had it in you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. much. <laughs>